Hello everyone, today I'm here to do a tag slash challenge video. It's called History of My Bookshelf Challenge. So this was created by Emma Books a few months ago and I saw it on my friend Amy's channel and I was just so intrigued by it because it asks a lot of questions about the books that are on your bookshelves that you normally wouldn't ask or answer. I don't know, but it sounds really great. There's like 26 questions, so let's get into it shall we the first question is the oldest book on your shelf it's not even on my shelf right now it's actually my living room uses decor i will insert a picture of it right here it's the fellowship of the ring by J.R. tolkien it's like my dad's old version when i think of oldest book i think of like a book that looks old honestly and that one i think is the oldest i don't know if little woman could count because that was published in the 1800s so maybe that one i don't know oh and then like the next like seven questions are a book you've read 2013 14 15 16 17 18 19. okay so it, it just says for that one to share a book you read with each year so for this one i'm going to share with you my favorite book that i read that year and my least favorite book starting in 2013 and i have already comprised this just so you know um and i had to look up like which one was my favorite my least favorite and i've been doing book two since 2013 so let's do this so and you can see also, this is going to be very, very interesting as you watch this, is how much my tastes have changed in these years since I've started booktube. So in 2013, I think it was like my second year maybe on booktube and I was still very, very much into the YA fantasy sci-fi game, like goodness me. And then now, and then as closer as we get to now, you'll see the genres change a ton as far as my favorite and least favorites go. I think my Goodreads profile down below if you want to check out my challenges where you can see each book I've read every single year, breaking it down year by year. But it's just interesting, especially when I was looking, when I was comprising this list and looking at all the books, I was like, wow, my reading has just changed astronomically. A favorite book that I read in 2013 was The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey, I think and The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I don't even own either of those two books anymore, so there you go. Least favorite one? I don't know. I did not make a least favorite video that year, so when I looked at list, I could not remember which one was my least favorite, so I failed on that one. 2014. My favorite was like the first three books in Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass, which are right here. So like Throne of Glass, um, Crown of Midnight, and Air of Fire. I was really big into that series. Um, again, I don't have a least favorite book for that year either because I think that was the f last year that I did not do least favorite books. So sorry. 2015, my favorite book was Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I'm not surprised. And then my least favorite was Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge, I believe. I really was on a Beauty and the Beast kick, obviously, after A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then in 2016, again, we have A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah G. Mass. And my least favorite book was In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. Oh my gosh, I, that's one of my least favorite throws I've ever read. In 2017, I think I'm on the right year. My favorite, that was a really hard year for me. I said um, my favorite was Renegades by Marissa Meyer as well well as um, the um, Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. I both really like those. My least favorite book was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Meniscalco, which I know it's probably jarring. A lot of people love that book. I despised it. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you liked it, that's great. And also, sorry I'm not pulling all these, but goodness me. Hopefully pictures will suffice. Here we go. 2018 has gone down as on record as my favorite reading year I've ever had in my life, and I still continue to stand by that because my favorite read of that year was The Nightingale, this beautiful book right here by Kristen Hanna. My least favorite book, um, two thrillers that I read, Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. I know it's gonna hurt a lot of people because the movie adaptation's coming out soon and a lot of people love it. I did not like it. I also did not like Something in the Water by Katherine Steadman. Just, I don't know, maybe I'm just too harsh on thrillers. I'm not sure. Um, and then in 2019, uh, my favorite book of the year was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, as well as The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. And then my least favorite was Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I have, I have professed my not liking of that book several times. So as you can see, like the first few years of book two for me, I was all about YA, YA, YA. And then when it got 2018, it just kind of really dramatically shifted and you can just sense a clear shift in tone of reading. Um, next question is a book you've read more than once. I honestly don't reread a ton. I know some people really love it. I'm not one of those people. I just don't. So Harry Potter, I have read Harry Potter 
at least 10 times each of them. Like I'm not exaggerating at all, at least. <laughs> a book you waited over a year to be published. Okay. I know I'm going to say Harry Potter for a lot of these, but we're talking about the history of my bookshelf and it is very true. So I read the first three books of them when they were already published so I could read them back to back. First one I remember very clearly waiting for the release for is Goblet of Fire. I remember I pre-ordered it at the Discovery Store. Who else remembers that? And ever since then I, would, I was waiting for the book. So I've been waiting, I think I waited well over a year for each one of them and I devoured them. So yeah, Harry Potters were the ones I waited on with bated breath for sure. Next up is a book you read on vacation slash away from home. For this one, for this one, I'm going to go with Roomies by Christina Lauren. I read this in, I want to say 2018 when I was on vacation with my mom in Florida because she took me to the Harry Potter world. I remember reading this um, like during bedtime, not bedtime, like, you know, getting ready for bed and things like that. So I remember reading that during vacation. A book you got from someplace special, anything that's not your local bookstore slash online retailer. Oh, what a hard question for me. I, I prime, I'm not going to lie to you. I primarily shop for books either on Amazon or Target. That's just where I go. That's so I, I don't think I have an answer for this one. And I'm really sorry about that. A book that made you cry. Do we have to even talk about anything other than The Nightingale? This is, there have been a lot of books that have made me cry, but I've never had one that made me full on sob like a freaking baby than The Nightingale. So that one for sure will always take the cake for that answer. Next up is a book you read in one sitting. I can tell you books I've read in one day. One sitting, graphic novels probably. There was Nimona I read in one sitting, I think. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Roll, that's on loan right now to a friend. Um, any graphic novel I'll probably read in one sitting, or at least a couple sittings. Reading a book in one sitting just never happens to me. I never have that time. Um, question number 15, as a book that was a gift for this one, oh. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. My amazing friend Amy from um, A Court of Crowns and Quills bought this for me randomly because she knew how much I wanted to read it. So I love you, Amy, and I cherish this book always, just like I cherish you. Stuff is a book that you read before owning. This could be from the library or borrowed from a friend. So there is a lot of books that I've read from the library before I own them. I always say, if you were like really down on money, the library is your best friend. Even if you have money for books, the library is your best friend. There are lots of these. Oh, Big Little Lies is what I think of. I definitely, there it is. I read this one before um, the TV release and everything like that. I think they read this in 2017 and I read it from the library, borrowed it, loved it, had to buy it. Next up is a book that you lent to someone else. The, I have probably like 15 books out right now to friends. This is not usual for me. There's, I have a couple usually, but since everything has happened and everyone's been home, I've had several of my friends be like, what can I borrow some books? So I know Well Met by Jen DeLuca is on loan right now to somebody. Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Pumpkin Heads is on loan, like I said. I can't even remember. There's a whole bunch of YA fantasy and contemporary books I lent my friend because her daughter wanted to read some. So there's a lot of them on loan right now. Um, Next up is a book that has been damaged. Oh boy, I don't know if you're ready for this. Harry Potter. I, it's a series I love, but it's a series that I have all of like the old hardbacks for that I still have and I'll never get rid of them because they hold so many memories and because they're just hilarious to look at because <laughs> they are beat up. So these are just two of them that I have right now just out and about. Um, as you can see, here's the Goblet of Fire that I got from the Discovery Store. I have taped up right here. You can see clearly that this book has been through the ringer. Um, like I've taped it on the inside. I've put, I gotta cover my my last name. I put Heather. This is Harry Potter rules. And it's just like, it's dirty. It's been through a lot. So that one for sure. This one, this one, yeah. The, <laughs> look at this one. I think my old dog got a hold of it. That's where's the dust jacket. I don't even know. So these have been damaged. Like they have been put through the test, but I will always keep them because goodness me, it's going to show my son that I love the mess out of these books and I got my freaking money source out of them or my parents' money because I was young, probably couldn't afford them. So next up, we have a book that you got on sale or discounted. Oh, I used to go to the thrift store a ton. One I remember finding at the thrift store, it's my favorite thrift store find, is I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. I found this at a random thrift store for like two bucks and I was like, I just listened to this book on audio and I loved it so much and I bought it. So very, very happy with the score of this book for $2. Super excited for it. Next page. <laughs> a book that you read with someone else, buddy, read, or read with a book club. 
Oh, oh I don't want to pull this out. It's right here. Red, White, and Roll Blue by, Ka by Casey Miss Quinson. I read this with Kristen over at Super Space Chick and Amy from A Quarter Crowns and Quills. We had a group um, text about it. It was fun. It was a great time. I need a buddy read more. I haven't buddy read in a while. Um, a book that you associate for a song with a song. I had to research this because I think there's so many amazing booktubers that can pair a book with a song like, like, like that. They are just good at it. Me? No. <laughs> I'm not good at it. So I was like, <laughs> so this is going to be a little tangent, so just forgive me. So my favorite band of all time is Dashboard Confessional. If you were my age in the 30s, you can feel me. They were like the quintessential emo band. When the emo phase hit, your girl was there for it. I was there. Dashboard was it. So since everything's been going on, he's been doing a lot of concerts like from home and live streaming and I've been watching because I'm still obsessed like I was in high school. <laughs> and he did his um, first EP album ever called So Impossible. And when I listened to a certain song, I was like, that song I need to pair with a book. And I thought about it long and hard. So what I want you to do is go on your Spotify, iTunes, whatever, and I want you to listen to the song For You to Notice Me by Dashboard Confessional, and then just listen to the lyrics, and if you've read this book, tell me this does not sound like the book. So For You to Notice Me is all about a guy that really is trying to get the attention of a girl that he really likes and that he, you know, he wants her to know that she's always, that he's always going to be there for her no matter what, that he just wants her to notice him. And I really felt that that song really resonated with this book, particular with um, the character... Jason. So this book has two points of view, Jason and Sloan's. Jason really likes Sloan and I think I can just I can just feel like the song goes really well with the book. If it doesn't, let me know. Either way, listen to that whole EP. It's phenomenal. It's all about a, like the very beginning of a relationship. First starting out with a guy not trying to notice the girl, then maybe feelings happen and then it's just an amazing EP. I love Dashboard. Can't talk about him enough, apparently. <laughs> Next up is a book you associate with food. Oh, is that one out? No, I haven't. I have to think. Is this book out on loan? Hungry Hearts. This is an anthology all about food. 13 Tales of Food and Love. So whenever I think of food, I automatically think of Hungry Hearts because why wouldn't you? <laughs> a book that you got years ago that you probably wouldn't buy now. <laughs> so so many. I had to look at my old books that I owned. Like I had to look at my books that I read on Goodreads and figure out what series I really loved that I was so excited to own but now I'm like mm. and that one that stuck out to me there's a lot of them probably um is Hush Hush series by Becca Fitzpatrick. I really loved the Hush Hush series at least like the first book. I was really into it. Now when I think about it I'm like I don't know. So there's that one. Book that you associate with a specific time in your life. Of course I could say Harry Potter. That really reminds me a lot of like middle school, like in even high school really, but middle school is when I discovered Harry Potter and loved it. Um, Twilight as well by Stephanie Meyer. So Twilight came out in 2005, I think. I was still in high school. I think I was a was I a junior or a sophomore? I can't remember. Anyway, I read it in high school when it first got published and I really that I remember that very specific time in my life when I read the Twilight series and I was so excited for it and the movie adaptations. I was there. I was a Twilight, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> a book that you used to like but don't anymore. I mean, you could take a look at all of my really old challenges on Goodreads for 2012, 13, and there's a lot of them that I don't think I would like anymore for sure, but one that really, two that really stick out to me are the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi. I really used to love that series. Now, I, I don't, like, even when it got announced that they were going to continue on with the series, I wasn't even excited for it, which I know a lot of people love that series, and I'm glad you do. I think I've just kind of grown out of it, as well as the Mortal Instruments, any Shadow Hunters book. I think I just, I'm just kind of done with it. That's not to say they're bad books by any means. I just think that I'm just not into them anymore and that's okay. Maybe I'll be back into them in a few years. I don't know, but I just don't find myself gravitating towards them at all anymore. And I haven't even finished the last book in the series. What is it called? Queen of Air and Darkness? I haven't finished it, so I don't know. Did I even start it? I don't even remember, but no series I used to love and I still have fond memories of of course but I just don't love them anymore and that's okay as readers you grow that is the whole name of the game as a human you're gonna grow I'm sure there's movies out there that you probably used to like and now you don't like anymore things happen 
And the last question is the newest book on your shelf. Oh, it's in my kitchen right now, but it's Anxious People, Anxious, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I just got an arc of that in the mail that comes out in September and I'm so excited for it. So here's a picture of it, but yeah, there you have it. That was the history of my bookshelf challenge. I really enjoyed this. It made me, you know, look back at previous years rather than focus on current reading right now, which a lot of challenges and tags do, which I love. But this one was interesting. Like, like I said, it made me go back and look at my old Goodreads challenges and just see how much I've changed as a reader. It's just insanity. So I hope you do this challenge just for yourself, if not on your channel or things like that, and just see how much you've changed as a reader. Or have you? Have you stayed consistent? Either way, it's amazing. You're reading and you're doing awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye.